it always takes a minute and it says recording started so it says live but we're really not live we're just recording live okay. um so uh hi everyone my name is Brooke Cheney. i'm the owner instructor here at a great start shooting school today i have with me tatiana whitlock most people on the range tend to call her t but you know i call her tatiana because i just get used to that but who knows maybe i'll slip into t one of these days or another um, this is number eight of our instructor series. And um, for those of you who are new to the series, the whole idea is instructors talking to instructors so that as a student, you realize we all started somewhere. We didn't walk in, pick up a gun and know everything and know how to do it. And I love having T on because she and I have a similar story, yet it gets very divergent and much different, but we started later in life and, um, and we, we agree that, or last time I talked to her, we agreed on the whole thing. It's kind of cool to be newer in the industry because we still remember what it's like to be that brand new student. So with that, I will try to get right into So thank you for your time, T. <laughs> me, absolutely. All right. So I could go on and on about who you are. Um, you know, the easiest thing is hit a girl in a gun. And I don't, what is your actually, I don't know. What is your actual title? Are you the national training director or what do you do at a girl in a gun? Yes. So like all of us women, I wear many hats. There isn't a single woman I've met in the shooting space who has only one role or responsibility in life. So I'd say first and foremost, I'm a mom. I have a three point five, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, kiddos, um, happily married, living in Maine with my family. And professionally, I have become, over the past decade, a full-time professional firearms safety instructor. And one of the hats that I wear within that genre is I am the national director of training for the country's largest women's shooting organization, which is a girl and a gun, Women's Shooting League. I'm also the director of training at my home range up here in Gray, Maine, Howell's Gun Shop where we have kind of just by accident or happenstance, um, an entirely female training staff. And I think we're one of the few ranges in the country that can say that, which is- How crazy is that? That is definitely, it's not. And these women are unbelievably credentialed and it is an honor to work with them. So it's, it's a real treat to come up here in Maine where nobody thinks much is going on, but we've got some really great stuff happening. And then I train nationally under my own name. It ranges all over the place, coast to coast, border to border throughout the year. And I also do quite a bit of work online, working remotely and virtually with folks who can't necessarily make it to the range for whatever those circumstances are. So and I do even though I'm just in Connecticut, I've taken some of her online courses with her, part of it as an instructor to see how she does it, but also because she always has stuff to teach me. So um, okay. yeah, I love your online stuff. The collaboration between us gals instructors is so amazing. So I, I love that part of our gun culture and space too. Like we're not competing against each other. We're all in this to raise each other up. And I'm so proud of that. In addition to that, I think the, the last final things I have to mention, because they are a big part of what I'm doing and contributing to right now, is I'm a member of the Walther Defense Division. And that's a, a rather unique uh, air uh, shooting team because uh, we're really a collective of instructors and competitors who Walter has kind of put together to draw upon for our industry knowledge and to help collaborate with new design and innovations that they've been releasing over the past few years. That and I'm also sponsored by TriggerCon, which is a new edition. And they're a phenomenal company to work with. Um, and I'm an honor, honored, truly, to be able to represent them. And I believe I saw on Instagram or Facebook, you guys just dropped a new Walter product. I know you were like raving about the grip and how it fit and that sort of stuff. Well, I just, just not to try and do the commercial thing, but what was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Walther F series. It's part of the PDP Walther uh, pistol line. And it's a firearm that we really worked hard for a number of years to develop that was specifically tailored for a female shooter. Um, and it isn't shrinked and pinked on our behalf. It's truly based on science and data and ergonomics and user interface and all of well it's not a radical design but it is a lot of very strategic and specific modifications and changes that put together have created a game changer of a pistol so you can have the stan standard capacity firearm in 15 rounds uh, and you don't have to compromise capacity or caliber so it's available in nine millimeter 
it's very a cool. full size, but very concealed. And when this gets up, I will absolutely have all of your links down below, Your uh, all the things you already talked about as far as Girl on a Gun, um, TatianaWhitelock.com, all of those good things. So, and uh, Walther and all that fun stuff. So the links will be there or there if you're on Facebook, but I'm going to put it up on YouTube first because it's easier there. All right, on to our next question. Since we're trying to stay with the same format so everybody gets to hear kind of sort of the same thing is what made you want to become an instructor? And I usually this is out of order, but yeah, something like that. <laughs> sure. I had no idea that the firearms industry existed. Um, like you, Brooke, I got into this. I really, my first class was just 11 years ago. And I came from a background of fine art, uh, industrial design and product manufacturing plastics. So I had no idea that you could find a career path within the shooting industry. This was completely alien and foreign to me. So I think it became uh, an interest of mine to pursue becoming an instructor. When I was going through my journey of learning, and becoming a training junkie, and I just couldn't get enough. And I was going to travel all over the country to these classes where it was intimidating. You know, I was definitely you know, putting on my big girl pants and, and, you know, mustering the courage to fly by myself to some foreign state in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of people I've never met before to take a class. That was a big leap for me. And part oh, of wait, my- wait, wait. I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you. So I'm going to go backwards, forwards to it. One of the other question is what sure. was your first training that you actually got to go to? Oh, well, my yeah. first. <laughs> oh. That's a story. <laughs> I know there are a lot of women who can who talk about having a horrible first experience, and that was not mine at all. My first class um, was pretty, it's hilarious to think about it now, but my ex-husband prompted me after the birth of our second baby, 16 months after our first, to go and get a hobby, something for myself, something that would feed my soul and just get me, you know, mental clarity and just fill me up spiritually. And so, um, and as far as you and me, that's the same thing. My husband's like, go. Because yeah. my first child and my second child were 16 months apart. And he's like, go, go. <laughs> and we know what that's like as women. You know, we give so much of ourselves. And it's it's amazing when we're given like that blank check to go and do something for us. So I wanted something completely out of my wheelhouse. I wanted something no one in my family had a say about or you know, could like be the expert in. So uh, I wanted to go hunting. I wanted to go on a duck hunt with my dad and brothers, which is something none of us had done in decades. So I pursued a women on target clinic and a hunter safety. The women on target clinic came first and I drove my minivan through the like encroaching forest over a un, you know, graded gravel road. And you swear you hear banjo music playing through the trees and you're like clutching the steering wheel. What have I done? You know? <laughs> And I have to laugh because the first thing I ever did was run a women on target program. So anyway, yes. Yeah. And I followed GPS to this teeny little range out in the middle of the woods. It's amazing. It's such a gem. It's the North Berwick Rod and Gun Club here in Maine. And it was exactly what I expected. It was the middle of nowhere. It was like a ramshackle kind of, you know, needing some love TLC log cabin style lodge slash classroom. And you know, bunker berm set out into the field and bad taxidermy all over the walls, you know, the dusty turkey, you know, all that. Stuff. Were the banjos playing or no? <laughs> In my head. In my head. <laughs> and I, it was amazing. And the gentlemen who were there, they even looked the part. I mean, it was like they, they got the uniform to a T, you know, they were wearing the denim and the Carhartts and the boots and the big silver belt buckles and the flannel and the vest and the trucker's cap and the mustache or the pendulous white beard. I mean, they were perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. But we expected and more. Oh yes, they from made hunters, amazing from hunters up in Maine. Right. I mean, right out of the pit, what you would think, you know, stereotypical would look like. But what blew my mind was how unstereotypical the experience I had was. And this group of people, they never once mansplained a thing. They were the most respectful, enthusiastic, passionate, yet calm. They looked you in the eyes. They never called you sweetie or honey. There was none of that like nurturing behavior. 
It was peer to peer and direct eye contact and absolutely use the correct nomenclature. The procedures, the processes were all explained. And all 23 of us who sat at those tables, like a pale shade of green, filling out the first safety waiver we've ever filled out. And you read those things and it's a little bit like, what have I done, right? <laughs> like, we all ended the day just absolutely enamored with the people, the culture, the experience. And the firearms were great, but it, it wasn't the, I mean, we got to shoot guns. But I think what we all took away more than that was this environment feels like home. And it was such a treat to have that community create that experience that I joined the club that week. I bought our first handgun that week. I was, you know, hook, line and sinker, had no idea what was coming next, but I knew I had found a place I belonged. Well, and to me, this goes back to that, what made you become an instructor sort of thing, because I was just on a, another podcast called Get Off My Lawn, <laughs> and it was six instructors. And we were just talking about how much we love watching people go from that green shade to oh, look what I can do. And it's just one of the best things ever. Mm -hmm. it is. That moment, being able to create that moment is, is a really special gift we have working with new people. But, so you know, that's why it's a great start I, I, because I love brand new shooters because I don't have any bad habits I have to fix. I mean, I love my seasoned shooters as well who want to get into competition and stuff, but I'm like, I like starting them because I love that moment where you go from green to oh, permagrin. So <laughs> I love that permagrin. It's true. It sticks. <laughs> it does. It does. It's like, oh, because like you said, you, you get there and it's scary and it's like, what the heck did I just get into? Like all those things. And, and it's just like, I, I talk about it in my students all the time. And like, I remember when I'm like, how do I touch this without going up? If I touch it, will it go up? You know, that to, oh, wait a second. Look at me viewing my range bag and all of that. Mm -hmm. All right. So now this is my next question, which I don't know if we already covered, but what is your actual first memory with firearms? Was it that event or was it something else? So my very first memory of firearms, and you kind of got to dig for some of these, you know? So my family, we had a tiny gun safe, like a tall, you know, uh, gun safe in a narrow closet set back into our house. And I always knew it was there, um, but it wasn't any more exciting than the power tools in the wood shop in the barn down the road. You know, um, my first memory of the firearms themselves was of my father and brothers cleaning their shotguns after a duck hunt in what was a big stoned entry room. Uh, covered in camo and the tall tales and the laughter and the boys were covered in camo or the room was covered in camo <laughs> okay you know, jackets everywhere and just I must have been you know seven or eight it's probably you know mm -hmm. experiencing this and the smell of hoppies you know which I didn't remember existed and it brought that memory back the first time I was in a gun shop and someone cracked the lid I was like take me back you know I was like I am old now. I am now eight. No matter what my face says, I am now eight. Exactly. It was so awesome, and you know that's what I remember that that jovial spirit, that amazing experience. But it really wasn't about the guns. It was about that feeling of of them being together and doing that. The, the firearms were a part of it, and I think that's kind of a theme that's carried forward into a lot of the work that we're doing now. And that I'm experiencing with a lot of people is the shift from the firearm is just a piece of a bigger story. And once we embrace that, it's like any other tool we have to make sure we respect and utilize properly. But while it is an incredible object, it's not the whole experience. It's a piece no. of something much bigger and something so much more powerful and meaningful. Yeah. Well, it's like the pink, right? And the pink for the name tags and all of that is like, I hated pink as in general like i hate it with a passion and that was pre-guns and then it's like because i didn't like girls either and pink was too girly and i'm like no 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 i'm not a girly girl i am not pink all of that and i found that when i got into the gun world through competition that and a girl a gun and i was just like huh there's girls out there i do like right I, I can be girly now. So I don't know when the pink thing happened, but my USPSA rig, when my husband bought it for me, it's all pink. I love it. I love it. And it's just like, uh, you know, Max Michelle, 
Yes. I, I had the, uh, I was able to trade with him one day and it was back 2012, 2013. So in the beginning for me, and I, I'm training with Max and we're at a, a USPSA competition. And, uh, and someone asked me about where I got my pink um, mag holders. And um, I said something like, well, I can't shoot for shit, but I can look good doing it. And Max started cracking up. I'm like, that's it. My claim to fame. I can make Max Michelle laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah I just like you're talking about all the experiences and this is the thing every time I go to testify whether it's in DC or Hartford I'm like I wish we could bring our experiences to there because they're just like guns evil guns evil guns evil and it's just like no 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 it's the most amazing giving caring people like all those people at women on target were volunteering their time to take care of you yeah and um are you going to detroit this weekend by chance <laughs> you know no i won't i'm not i'm not able to fly at the moment oh okay yeah we'll talk about that then we talked oh yeah i apologize <laughs> well we'll let that well, that's our cliffhanger right now <laughs> So, um, all right. So let me go on, try to stay on track. So we get you out of here in a reasonable time. <laughs> so I remember like you were started talking about in your journey, like flying all over God's creation to find training. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of the reasons I opened a great start shooting school is because I wanted to be able to give people little chunks of training versus what you and I did, which was fly to Arizona, fly to Florida, fly to wherever, uh, Texas. But when I was looking as a brand new person, I was just like, I don't even know what they're offering. And I don't know if this is basic enough and I don't know if I can get in this. So how would you suggest to a brand new person who knows nothing, what should they look for or what would you give for advice? Sure. There's more structure out there than you think. I think as a new person, you look at this and you, I think one of the Funniest stories I have is somebody who said, I joined this, um, there's an incredible gun range in, here in Maine called the Scarborough uh, Run Gun Club. They're amazing. They hold lots of matches across multiple disciplines, you know, sporting plays, vibes, all of that stuff. IDPA, US, all of the acronym soups. They do all of the stuff. They have law enforcement training. It's it's the full gamut. And this particular student said they went, and they, they went to watch a match and tour the range. And they walked out of there just completely dear headlights overwhelmed um felt like how i don't even know where to begin and it was paralysis by analysis yeah and it took them it took her uh, finding a girl and a gun to be introduced to the fact that there is a progression we can find out where you're at and it can be ground zero right you may have zero or you might have a little and you know ain't no shame in your game if you come with something fantastic and to know that there is a next step the bouncing ball will go forward and we will snowball you and your skills to follow your interests and then it can be interest driven is another big thing that most new people have no idea a lot of folks come into this and a lot of folks have over the past two years three years come into firearms from a, a very um from a place of need i'll say uh, a place Scarcity, of vulnerability. concern and distress quite honestly i yes. mean and that vulnerability is terrifying, paralyzing in and of itself. But what many of these folks have discovered is they have, uh, is that has been the catalyst to introduce them into the world of firearms. That while they have cultivated defensive skill sets and understand the laws and legalese of their environment as it relates to home defense, concealed carry, self defense law within your state and federal levels, that they have a passion for other genres that they never even knew existed. So just because you start in competition doesn't mean you're locked in there. Or because you you started in self-defense doesn't mean you can't branch out and be like, oh my gosh, I'm in love with steel. Because who isn't in love with bringing steel? It's like, it you hear the thing that, that instant gratification, man, every time or so, not. <laughs> just do it till you get, you know, we get, we get you there. <laughs> oh my God. Steel was my arch nemesis when I started. I cannot tell you. Well, I can tell you because I'm about to, um, but it's like I was in competition and like there'd be one eight inch plate and that would be two mags worth because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And so I'm just like, and for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, it's like usually there's multiple things you need to shoot. So taking an entire magazine worth of ammo, not so awesome. <laughs> so. 
you're about four hours of knowledge away from fixing that. We got you. You know, <laughs> that's the other piece. And kind of the final part of answering that question is like just because you found a hole in your skill sets, um, there is a solution to it. And there is going to be an instructor or an organization or an entity or a class that will fill that void for you. So no question comes without an answer in this community. And if you are in an environment where people are not hearing you ask those questions, it's time to find another environment uh, because the limitations might only be who you've surrounded yourself with. And I'm alluding to the fact that many people begin at with uh, by learning from the people in their immediate family and friend circle. So it's very, you might discover you outgrow them faster then they're prepared for you to outgrow them. And that is okay. And that is what Absolutely. people like Brooke and I and a girl and a gun are here to help you take those next steps based on you. And what and here's, here's something I never thought about when I was looking, which is pick up the phone yeah. and actually call the instructor you're considering Absolutely. talking to. But I, I never had that idea. I'm like, I'd look at the, I'm like, okay, firearms training. And then here's all these things. I'm like, oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't I'm like, if I had the thought to, if I had picked up the phone, we are always happy to talk to you about what your training needs. If this is a fit or a not, because if you're not a fit for me, here's the really cool thing. I've got people like T that I can send you to. If you know, maybe you need something she's got, or maybe your shotgun and rifle and you know, and I've got other people that I can refer you to. So Ideally, if they're a good instructor, and even if they're not the good fit, they'll have someone to send you to. Absolutely. Because like you started in the beginning, the whole thing of we're not in competition because we understand there's lots of people who need training and we're happy to find the help you find the person that's going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? This is the stumper. This is the hard question. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> what are you most proud of? You know, there's a lot of moments and there's dozens. And that's the same answer everyone else gives, just so you know. <laughs> and you know, that's a real gift that we have because we to work Hold with on, so back up there. No problem. We get to work with so many people. I mean, all those proud moments come from helping someone overcome a fear, uh, helping them break through a past traumatic experience, helping them take back their own power. That is so incredible incredibly soul satisfying. And I don't think, I mean, anybody who's in an instructor worth their ilk isn't in this for the celebritizing of themselves. We're in this because we have a passion for the people we get to meet and work with. And it's a real honor to have an opportunity to work with these folks all over the country, all ages. So that is something to be really proud of. Um, I think as far as my career goes, what am I the most proud of is the evolution that I've been able to contribute to within the organization that is a girl and a gun. I came into it about six years ago. It is in its 11th year and it is, it has changed and evolved so much. And in that time, I've watched the proficiency of thousands of women across the country elevate from rookie to formidable. And oh. that is unbelievable. And just so we're clear, I'm one of those people. I was there. What are your uh, uh, your first girl in the gun? And I still use stuff and remember stuff that you said mm -hmm. from that class because we were talking about concealed carry at the time. Yes. And we're, we're in the clubhouse and someone asked a question. I don't remember exactly what the question was, but it had to do with clothing. Because mm -hmm. we were talking about how um, solids versus patterns, that patterns are better. And she's like, well, but I don't like them. And I, I believe your response is how I quote you, whether it's correct or not, but was what's more important, your life or your fashion sense? <laughs> and I love that because of you, I went on that that uh, clothing shop thing that you suggested uh, at our last private thing. Um, Stitch fix or something. Yeah, else. yeah, it's one of those stitch fix things. So now yours truly, who used to be solids all the time, has learned to embrace the florals and the prints and all of that. And so it's just it's just sort of fun because I guess like six years ago, that is probably when we met at a girl and a gun out in Texas somewhere. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, but I just think about it's like as an instructor, do you remember that 
one thing that you said in that class six years ago? No, but as your student, I do. And I think that's part of also what keeps us going as instructors is like, we never know mm -hmm. how we're going to be able to help you fix you, not fix you, but help you improve that sort of stuff or give you something that is worthwhile. And so it's fun stuff. All right. So like that on to our last one. I know that I we talked about before one of the things, but is there anything else in general that you want to share? Sure. So we found out a couple of weeks ago, my husband and I, that we are expecting a surprise. We're calling it our encore baby. <laughs> we're both a little bit older and, and weren't really planning on this, but you know, um, in true Jurassic Park fashion, life will find a way. So we're expecting our fourth total uh, child into our family. And as a result of that, Mm -hmm. That led to some uh, unexpected but really interesting uh, changes for an interim period until itty bitty arrives. In that, being pregnant, lead exposure is an is a no no. Um, indoor, outdoor handling, etc., is a big no no. Um, and given that I am considered, this is a real great way to make a gal feel good. Um, <laughs> considered a geriatric pregnancy, which thanks. <laughs> We're not talking about age. We're not telling anyone, but okay. <laughs> I think it's only after 29. I'm sure that's what they're talking about. 35. So I am older than 35 by a lot, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> so as a result of that, my doctors are keeping me pretty chill and not in the air and, you know, keep it low key. Um, but what I'm doing as a result of that is a lot of lead free training. So I'm shifting all of my work into a lead free environment. So I'm doing a ton of work with Umarex and the Walther line of air pistols through Umarex. So I'm still able to work within the same platforms and get all of those reps and practice time and doing a ton of dry fire sessions, virtual private lessons, all of that stuff. Um, safe cleaning practices. So I'm unrolling an entire new world, not just for those expected mama shooters that are out there, but anybody who's really kind of in a lead sensitive time in their life for whatever the medical reasons may be. Or if you have a minor who you're trying to limit lead exposure to, or you're working through a quarantine like situation where getting to the range or budgetarily getting to the range is a challenge. A lot of these lead free options uh, are phenomenal. You know, working with the Mantis system, for example, to really get data and feedback from your dry fire sessions so that when you do take it live, it's got more weight and merit and you can diagnose yourself at a minute level. So it's been a, a fun, almost like I get to nerd out in a whole new way, you know? I like being the nerd, so there's that. <laughs> Super nerd and I am so proud of my nerdiness. <laughs> yes, so that transition has been actually very eye-opening and I'm diving into all kinds of sciencey stuff and I'm really getting into it. So all right. So are you posting stuff about this on Instagram? Where do you post the most? So I post pretty universally across LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And I'm gonna be striking back up a blog, which I haven't done in years. So that's gonna be coming back online. Uh, and a lot of video tutorials that support that because I can't be on the road. So I have studio time for the first time. I'm kind of excited about that. You know, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So in August, we're rolling out the complete series. will start to unfold. And those articles will go live. And those videos will launch. Online virtual private lessons are good to go as of now. And I'll be kicking back in the live streaming webinar series that I had, plus some new topics, uh, which we ran throughout COVID. So here we go. We're back. We're back online. We're digital. <laughs> there you go. Maybe I'll have time then to do some uh, training with you again. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So anyone who's got health issues or pregnancy and has questions, um, yeah, definitely check out all the stuff because who knows when they're watching this because this is live recorded but of course the replay is forever yes. so um but yeah because people always ask is like well i'm pregnant what do i do mm -hmm. and as we know some doctors just think you're crazy if you have a firearm so it's like afraid to ask your doctor what you can and can't do so it's kind of cool that you're in the situation so you get to walk people through it and I'm assuming that your doctor's cool with firearms because it's easier to have a doctor that's cool with firearms when you're an instructor. Yes, yes. 
And it's always a little funny when you break it up the first time, but you know. <laughs> So, all right. Well, congratulations again on, wait, number four, you said? I lost count already. Oh, well, this will be our family's fourth. All right. And um, so very cool on getting nerdy. Like I said, I'll get all the links down here for all the stuff we talked about. And that's it. I just went through my list because I have a short attendance span. So people are like, why aren't these longer? We want you to talk forever. I'm like, no, no, no. You're lucky to get me in front of a computer for 15 minutes. And this has been 30. So... <laughs> With that, thank you again for your time and congratulations again and again and again because it's very exciting. And I look forward to seeing you live and in person again somewhere, maybe next year at A Girl on a Gun. Yes, I will be back on the road for our national conference next year in April. Okay. Cleared hot to go back to the range. <laughs> Not that she's planning ahead or anything because she's already got 2023 figured out and what the dates are, I'm guessing. Actually, yes, it's entirely booked and the programs are live. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah people used to think i was crazy and like they're like asking for a, a a weekend in september october and it's only january i'm like oh yeah no not that one but this one yes. so well but. thank you for having me on brooke and thank you for championing this series i think it's fantastic all right well thanks again and i'm going to click on the end broadcast thing and we'll goodbye goodbye oh i have to hit it twice it drives me crazy <laughs>